So this is the problem we did Friday in class that did not get recorded. Um, and we want to determine the directional sense and magnitude of the resultant moment about the origin using both scalar and vector analysis. Okay, so my origin is here and I'm going to put a pink dot on it so we can see where that is. Okay, and we want to figure out the magnitude and the direction of the resulting moment of these two force vectors about the origin. And I am not going to redraw this right now, but what I am going to do is I'm going to kind of use some colors. And I'm going to go ahead and break these into the X and Y components because I know that it is so much easier to find these perpendicular distances than it is to try to go back and calculate the perpendicular distance to the vector as a whole. Okay, so and what I have to remember too is that these vectors are actually, they just keep running along forever and forever. So as we're going back to look at that. So if I have 260 newtons and I have a 5, 12, 13 triangle representing my slope, then I know that I'm going to have 260 newtons times 5 over 13. Okay. And I know that my Y component is 260 Newtons times 12 over 13. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'll use a different color just so we can see what's going on. I have a 400 Newton vector. It has an X component going in the X direction. And again, that's going all the way from infinity to infinity. And then I have a Y component. And again, that Y component goes all the way from infinity to infinity. So I have 400 Newtons cosine 30 and 400 Newtons sine 30. So I have um, the scalar, I have the X and Y components of these vectors. And now we can start with summing moments about the origin um, to figure out the magnitude and the directional sense. So I'm going to start with my rule that I'm using is I am going to sum and I'm going to sum moments, not forces, moments, and I'm going to sum about 0, .0 okay? And I am going to be using right hand rule positive, okay? Summing moments about 0, right hand, or the origin I mean, right hand rule positive. Okay, so what we're going to do is I just kind of like to start left and move right, kind of right hand rulish, and I'm going to come across here and I can see that I have this orange vector, the Y component that is going up and down infinitely. And I need to get the vertical distance, the, I mean the perpendicular distance from the origin to this vector line, and I can see that is the vertical and then this is where we have the perpendicular meeting. And remember, if I have a force in the y direction, I'm going to be multiplying by a distance in the x direction. So I have my force in the y, and I have my distance in the x. So 400 newtons sine 30. That's my force in the y. Distance in the x, 2 meters. Okay. Positive rotation. If this were a clock handle now, let's put a clock handle right here starting at the origin. There's my clock handle. And if I'm pushing up with my vector, it's connected like a clock hand. I can see it's actually causing rotation. It's causing it to rotate and it's causing that counterclockwise rotation. So that is indeed positive. Okay, so now let's look at the X, the X component. The X component travels in the X direction. So I need a dy. I need a force in the y direction, I mean a distance in the y direction, and I'm going to find that perpendicular distance. Okay, so if I have a force in the x direction, I need a distance in the y direction. 400 newtons cosine 30 times 5 meters. Okay, now again, here's my clock handle. I'm attaching it at the origin. I'm attaching it at the origin. It is perpendicular to the line that my force vector is on. And if I press my force vector to 
the right, I can see that I have rotation of my clock handle and I can see that it's rotating counterclockwise. That is going to be positive rotation, okay? Now we need to come up here to the vector at B. So I have this vector, it is actually running on the x-axis. And if I put my clock handle, attach it at the origin, and I pull this way, I can see I'm just causing translation. There is zero rotation. That distance, that perpendicular distance is zero. So this one is not going to be causing a rotation about 0.0. That doesn't mean it doesn't cause a rotation about other points, but specifically at O, if I look at my clock handle, it is translation. So now we need to go to the Y component. And again, the Y component runs in the Y direction and I need to find a perpendicular distance to that vector, okay? So if I put my clock handle, attach it at the origin, push up along the vector line, point, 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 point. I can see that rotation indeed occurs and it's occurring counterclockwise. So I have a positive 260 Newtons times 12 over 13. So here I had Fx dy, here I have Fy. Okay, there's my force. Now I need dx, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. When I multiply this out, I get 3,572. My units are in Newton meter. These were all positive, so my solution is positive, and I'm going to show that positive direction being counterclockwise. And there we have the scalar uh, solution to this problem.